the Stages of Change model. This video was inspired by the book Changing for Good by Prochaska, Norcross, and De Clementi. One principle of change is that all change is self-change. Therapy is professionally coached self-change. Self-change is harder than it looks. The stages of change model is described as trans-theoretical. It incorporates a great many previous ideas about how people change. What tools or techniques cause change? It's important to know that different tools work at different stages in the process of change. This model includes a number of discrete stages of change, pre-contemplation, contemplation, determination, or sometimes called preparation, action, maintenance, and relapse. Sometimes this is pictured as a spiral as people may move through these stages multiple times, each time getting significantly better for the problem they're trying to change. I'm going to illustrate this model using a slightly embellished personal story about losing weight. At one point in my life, I went to a class reunion. I saw a lot of people I hadn't seen in years. As I walked around, I, first an old girlfriend came up to me and said, David, I don't recognize you. You've put on so much weight. I said, oh, no, I haven't put on any weight. It's just that guy, skinny guy you married, he's so tiny you don't notice. Later on in the evening, two other guys came up to me and said, David, remember we used to have lunch every day? We didn't recognize you. You've put on so much weight. My answer was, no, I haven't put on any weight. At this point, I am just raising my consciousness. I am pre-contemplating. I don't believe I have a weight problem. And even if I did, I'm not thinking about changing it. Here you can see that I am in the pre-contemplative area at the top of the screen. So I say to my partner, they told me I'd put on a lot of weight. I don't think I put on any weight, do you? And she begins to laugh, determined to prove that I have not put on any weight and I do not have a weight problem. I go looking for the scale. I look in the bathroom. It's not there. I look in the closet and under the bed. I can't find the scale. Finally, out in the garage, I find it sitting up on a top shelf. I bring it in, clean it up and weigh myself. Ooh, I weigh much more than I thought I should. There, there must be something wrong with this scale. So I put it back in the garage. The next day at work, I go in and I check myself on the doctor's new digital scale. Guess what? It says I'm even heavier than my bathroom scale did. What's going on here now? I'm reevaluating myself. I'm looking for evidence for or against my having a weight problem. I am in the stage of contemplation. Using our circular diagram, you can see that I have now moved from pre-contemplation, I don't think I have a problem, to contemplation, well, I'm willing to consider it. Having weighed myself several times, I decide that, yes, I have put on some weight. The question is what to do about it. On the way home, I notice as I make the turn to go down my street that there in that shopping center is a gym. I'd never noticed it before. So I stop, go in, talk to the nice man and decide on a gym membership. Notice that many gyms have special sales in January every year where all the people who decide they're going to join a gym and get into shape can buy memberships at half price or pay for two months and get one free. Many of these gyms realize that most of these people will buy their membership and within a month or so, they will have stopped coming. As I'm leaving the gym, I look down to the other end of the center and there is a store that sells sporting goods. So I go down and I buy a gym bag and some shorts and cute little shoes. I have all the things I'm going to need to begin my exercise program. I also notice back in a corner, there's a video store going out of business. 
this is an old story in video rental places used to be much, much more common than they are these days. So I go in and sure enough, they have exercise videos on sale at 75% off. So I buy a stack of those videos. If I'm going to start exercising, I need to learn something about it. On our chart here, you can see that I've moved from the contemplation thinking stage into the determination or preparation stage. I'm accumulating the things that I might need in order to begin my exercise or weight loss program. Later that evening after dinner, I make a big bowl of popcorn, pop a video into the machine, and with my feet up on the footstool, sit and eat popcorn and watch exercise videos for the balance of the evening. Have I done any exercise yet? Am I losing any weight? No, not yet. Looking at our circular stages of change diagram, I am now in the determination or preparation stage. Many people progress this far in their efforts to change some bad habit and then get stuck here and don't move on into the action step. The result, they recycle back through forgetting they have a problem into one of the previous stages. Let's see if I manage to move into action. I begin to visit the gym. I start going after work every day. This is my commitment both to myself and to others, the gym and my partner, that I am going to do something. Definitely, I am now into being prepared or determined to make a change. Here again, we look at our stages of change diagram and still I'm in determination or preparation. It's important for counselors and family members not to get discouraged when they see someone taking a lot of time planning and preparing to go into a treatment program or looking for a counselor. This is part of the process of change. It doesn't mean that they are avoiding the change necessarily, but they do have to go through this determination or preparation step. So I start my daily trips to the gym. The first day, oh, it's a lot of fun. I'm walking all around, waving, saying hi to people, enjoying watching all the people exercise. Finally, one of the gym members comes up to me and says, here, come over here and try this, this weightlifting. Oh, and I say, oh, no, that's okay. I'm just watching. No, no, no. I want you to try to actually lift some weights. So I come over and he shows me how to grip the weight bar. And I reach down and I pick the weight bar up. Oh, this is easy. This is fun. This is no problem at all. I can do this. Next, my helpful instructor says, we're going to put some weights on the end of that bar. Oh, no, I'm thinking it was so easy lifting that bar with no weight on it. But as time goes on and I begin to exercise and put more weight on here, this is going to get more difficult. This is true of most changes that people try to make. Initially, a small step can be coming in to see the counselor or joining a 12-step program. But as they move through the action step, it becomes progressively more difficult. So now I'm exercising. I'm actually doing the work, which is the part of the process of change. Looking at our model for the stages of change, you can see that the action bubble is about the same size as the others. But in reality, this action stage can become much larger than all of the others. Progressing through the action stage uh, may require additional skills and it may become progressively more difficult the longer people are involved in taking action. One day I get home from work late and I'm tired. So I take the day off and decide it's no big deal if I don't go to the gym every single day. A few days pass and Friday comes around and well, I've been pretty good about hitting the gym every other day this week. So I skip Friday, then Saturday, 
And, well, what the heck, I'll take Sunday off, too. Pretty soon I discover that I've stopped going to the gym altogether. What's happened here? I've stopped doing the thing that got me better. I am no longer in action. And over a period of time, my weight comes back on. But at this point, I'm no longer weighing myself or really caring how much I weigh. I'm in full-blown relapse. Here you can see that I stopped doing action and moved into relapse. In this model, relapse is seen as a failure to continue in action. From action, people should move into a maintenance step in which they continue to do whatever it is that got the change successful in the first place. People who've seen a therapist should stay in therapy or on medication, or people should attend self-help meetings and so on. Studies have suggested that people who continue to maintain their action for up to five years have extremely low rates of relapse. People who initially achieve a change and readily stop doing the program quickly re relapse and end up back where they started pre-contemplated. The good news here is, however, having gone around the circle once, if someone decides that they want to go around again, it takes less time in each of the stages to reach the action stage. Here's a good example of the importance of continuing to do the maintenance step. In the stages of change model, relapse is not seen as a failure of willpower or any other defect but rather simply as the failure to do the continuing maintenance step. When talking with counselors, one of the questions that we commonly ask is, what stage of change is your client in? Or if this is a self-help change process you're going through, changing yourself, what stage of change are you in? And the correct answer is for which problem? Uh, clients may be at different stages of change for different problems. People who move directly to action are more likely to fail or relapse than people who move through the stages in order. But you may be in the pre-contemplative stage of change for one problem and already into action for another problem. It's perfectly okay to tackle problems uh, at different rates as long as you continue to maintain whatever gains you've accomplished. Here are some stages of change descriptors. How would you recognize when someone or yourself is in this stage of change? For pre-contemplative, I don't have a problem, and even if I did, I don't want to change. Other people need to change, and they need to leave me alone. You may be resisting change at this stage. People in the pre-contemplative stage of change believe that it is just their fate and that they're not capable of changing. They do not want to talk about their problem. How would you recognize someone who is in contemplation stage of change? They would indicate that I'm willing to discuss it. Uh, we'll, we'll think about it and consider whether to change, but I'm not ready to change at least now. They're thinking about it, not ready to change yet, may feel stuck. Stage descriptors for preparation. They're getting ready. Okay, so I'm willing to start changing, but haven't gotten started yet, and I'm going to need some help to begin. While our diagram indicates action as a single step. It's important to realize that as people move through action, the way in which they're behaving changes. So in early parts of action, you would recognize someone who is saying, I'm starting to make change and I could use some help to keep going. I'm not sure how long I want to keep this up. People who've moved farther along in their action step who are in late action would sound more like, I'd like this change to be permanent, but I've got a long way to go and need help to get there. 
What would someone in the maintenance stage of change sound like? I've gotten the changes made. I think I'm stable and I want to stay that way, but I'm not sure what will happen when life throws new challenges at me. Counselors often want to know how to help someone to move through the stages of change. They ask the question, which intervention works best with which stage of change? And the answer is that we need to match the intervention to the stage of change that the client is in. In an upcoming video, I want to talk about those interventions and how they would match up with the particular stage of change. What's ahead on the Counselor Soapbox video channel? Next, matching interventions to the stage of change some more videos about self-change, and some additional videos about mental health and having a happy life. If you've enjoyed this video, please click the like button directly below. Comments are always appreciated. To receive new videos, please subscribe to this channel and this series. For more information, please visit the CounselorSoapbox.com blog, where you will find articles on mental health, substance abuse, and having a happy life. The David Joel Miller fiction and nonfiction books are available on Amazon.